Hello, my name is Ben Clevenger, I'm an anaesthetic registrar here at the Royal Free Hospital in London. I'm just going to show you a brief video about how to run a TEG, a thromboelastograph. Um, so, first of all, we're going to go through the equipment that you need, then we're going to show you how to run uh, the sample, and then thirdly, show you how to use the software in order to get your uh, conventional TEG trace. So, firstly, we're going to show you the equipment that we need. So, um, you will need a sample of blood from your patient um, in a 5 ml syringe. Um, taking 3 or 4 mils will be absolutely adequate. So, we'll use some saline for this demonstration. You then need your cups. So, you have both clear and heparinase cups. The clear cups are clear as shown, and the heparinase cups are blue as shown. So, you need one of each of those. Uh, and they're often will be found stored in the fridge. And for a standard TEG, we also use a kaolin sample, which is a activator um, that is used to uh, activate the coagulation process. So you need your cups, your kaolin, your blood sample. You'll also need a drawing up needle, and you'll need a pipette. And the pipette will need to be calibrated and set to allow you to have 360 microliters of blood in each cup. Okay, so once you've collected the equipment that you need to run the TEG, the first stage is to load the cups into the TEG machine, and I'm going to demonstrate that now. So we have our TEG analyzers here. I've got my two cups, and we always put the heparinase cup, the blue cup, on the right hand side, just for ease of um, monitoring our results. So, we take our cup, which um, it consists of two parts. There's a cup and a pin that fits into it, and this is what gives us our trace. So we put both parts into the bottom of our machine, like so. We then, with our hand on top of the machine, raise that up until it engages there. And then underneath, there's a button that allows us to load the pin onto the machine. And we need to press that firmly three times. We then bring the cup down halfway, and you can see now that the pin has been loaded into the top of the machine. The cup is still slightly raised out of, the, out of its seat, so we have to push that down to engage it firmly. We then put this back to the start position, which will allow us to pipette the blood in to allow us to run our trace. So I'll demonstrate that now with the heparinase trace uh, cup. You do it just the same way. So we raise it all the way up with our hand on the top. We engage firmly with three presses, then bring it halfway down, seating the cup firmly, and then going back to our start position. We'll next pipette the blood. So we're now going to pipette the blood into the uh, TEG machine to allow us to start to run the traces and to give us our thromboelastography trace. Now it's important to remember that this is a time critical procedure because our blood sample from our patient will be clotting whilst we're um, running the, preparing our uh, TEG trace. So um, it needs to be done within about four minutes maximum. So you need to be moving with some speed during this. So what we need to do is we need to prepare one mil, uh, transfer one mil of blood into our kaolin bottle, which will then prepare into the cups. So we use a, a needle to allow us to do that. And again, remembering always to wear gloves when we're handling any bodily fluids. So we fill to the one mil line, which is clearly marked on the side of the kaolin bottle. That is filled to one mil. We'll then discard our blood, like so. Now, this then needs to be gently agitated with five gentle uh, turns. So one, two, three. This mixes the blood with the kaolin, which is going to act as our activator. We're then going to come to our tape machine. 
We need to now um, insert our pipette, so what we need to do is take a cater. And this is the important part of pipetting. So in order to, um, to pipette the exact amount that we want, which is 360 micro microliters, which is um, set on our pipette, we need to firstly press the button halfway down, which allows us to draw up the exact amount that we need. So we then insert the head, release the button, this then aspirates the correct amount. We then gently transfer this into our tape cup, I use my finger to steady my hand, and we press the button all the way to release the full amount into the cup. Um, this will give us the exact amount that is needed and will then um, allow us to then draw up the second amount to put into the head and tray. So, pressing halfway first, aspirating, and then carefully pushing the whole way down to give the complete amount. And we try to avoid any bubbles within that. We then press the other button to eject the pipette. We then need to load our samples and we can start, so hand on top, we load our sample, and we put this across to test. Hand on top, we load our sample, and we go across to test. So the traces are now ready to be run, and we now need to start the trace. So, so we've now loaded our blood samples into from the elastograph, and it is now going to be starting our trace. So what we need to do is to start our trace. As you can see here, we've got four different analyzers, each with two channels. So channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're using channels seven and eight. So we need to select those channels and we need to make sure we're on this screen. Sometimes we'll be on our results screen, uh, which is this screen. To get to the home screen in order to start the samples, we need to press the tech button. So once we get to this sample, this screen, we're then going to select the channels we want. So we're running 7 and 8, so we're going to select it and then press start. We're then selecting 8, as you can see it's gone blue, which means that it's selected, and we're going to start. This means that the analysis of the samples is beginning and that we're recording the, the traces that are developing as the blood clots. We can now enter the patient details that we wish to use. Um, and in this case, we click on the drop down menu and we'll get a, a drop down menu um, of patient details for patients who already have um, their records on the system who've had previous traces done. For a new patient, we need to click on case, which allows us to create a new patient, and we enter the patient details um, into the boxes as required. I'm not clicking on the boxes because it does give a drop down list of the previous patients. Um, for patient confidentiality. So as well as selecting the patient details, we also need to tell them the, uh, the machine what type of trace we're running. So we click on this drop down menu here and it gives us a selection of whether we're doing a native trace or a kaolin trace or a kaolin with heparinase or a native with heparinase is a bit further down. Um, and various other options for different reagents and activators that can be used. So in this case we're using a kaolin trace in number 7 and then in number 8 we're using a kaolin and heparinase. And it's important that we select the correct um, test because the reference ranges change depending on which activator and which test we're running. We then can then select which stage of the operation, so um, we can say why we're running it, we can say whether the patient's bleeding um, or for whatever reason and if we're doing multiple traces throughout an operation it allows us to give us a time frame and to give us a chronological order of the traces because things can change during the course of the operation. So we've started our traces, we've selected the patient details, we've put in the type of uh, trace that we're running and we've given a little bit of demographic details about the operation. We then click on done and you can see on either side of the screen is uh, information for how to uh, run the, the test um, as an aid memoir. So we click on done which will then take us to the main screen whereby we start to get our results um, of our TEG as the 
the traces develop. And this will develop over the next um, few minutes to hours, uh, depending on what we're looking for. So we've demonstrated how to run a tag, and gone through how to load the sample cuvette um, with the cups and pins and how to pipette the blood for a kaolin tag. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you the software so that how we can get the results. So this is our results screen with uh, all of the eight channels that we have available to us. We can then select the individual traces by double clicking on them. Um, and it tells us the patient's details at what time we started the sample and what type of sample we're running um, and why we're running the sample or what stage in the operation. Um, as the trace develops it will give us all of the deta details and the data that we need to find out um, and we can then print that uh, by clicking on print. If we want to go back to our results page we click on main which takes us back to the results I'll click on the other sample that I started. So this one was the kaolin sample in channel 7. If we then want to run another sample, we can press the TEG button, which takes us back to the home screen, which allows us to then start a new trace, um, enter new patient details, um, and to go uh, back, back through the steps that I've been through already. I hope this makes things easier when asked to run a TEG.